All right, guys. So based on what we've done so far, what we need to start on at this stage to start designing the horizontal alignment or the road center line. To do that, first of all, let's just hide all the points. We don't need the points at this stage. We replaced all the existing crown points with a polylines to show the existing center line of the existing roads. We created our surface, so what we need to do now just to hide these points, otherwise they will slow the design while we're working on Civil 3D. To do that, simply I'm just going to select the surface, select the polylines for the existing roads, center lines, and isolate them. So, this is the existing roads, and the proposed road is required to go at about 90 degrees to the existing roads at both ends. So we're looking at a new proposed alignment to go all the way from here with a curve to that point and then going back to the second existing road. So to draw the alignment, we go simply to the Create Design panel. We've got the Horizontal Alignment tool, Create uh, Alignment Creation tool from there so we'll call it alignment one. We don't have an urban design at this stage. We don't have a site for our uh, example. Uh, it's a proposed uh, line, not an existing, and we are drawing the center line of the road. The layers will keep them the same. We can choose to show the major and minor labels to start with. One of the other options we can look into is the design speed. So our proposed design for 60 kilometers per hour. We're not going to choose the uh, criteria based design option. For one reason, this will limit our uh, options for changing the radiuses on the uh, alignment. Having said that, we've done our, our homework for knowing our radiuses. This is from Austroids radiuses specification for different speeds on roads so we're designing for 60 kilometers per hour the minimum desirable radius we can go to is 98 and if we are doing our calculations based on the formula for radius for a speed of 60 kilometers per hour and for the super elevation of five percent but if we reduce our friction to the minimum or the desirable value which is 0 0.1 that value should be around 180 meters for the radius. So we know our value should be between 98 and 180. I'm looking to choose a value of 120 for the radius. That's why we're not using this option for the uh, criteria based design based on asteroids. The only one thing I did on this table just to specify the speed. If we go back to our main menu, for the alignment so i'll press ok and that will start the alignment layout tool for creating an alignment our work will be on the first icon on the left hand side for drawing the alignment with curves or without curves for the curve settings we can go to uh, the last option and that will give us the curve settings we'll choose the curve of 120 for now this is a value between 98 and 180 what we discussed a minute ago and I'll choose OK I'll go back to draw an alignment tangents with curves I'll start from the point of the existing road where the center line is finishing for the crown points so there's no snap obviously turned on we'll choose a different white snap this is another method for using the snap options in civil 3d uh, which is I find it very handy just press shift and right click on the mouse that will give you all the snap options so we need to snap to the end points you find this tool is handy just to where you need it rather than it's turned on all the time and keep snapping to all other lines so we're starting as we agreed about 90 degrees to the existing road so I'll choose the other snap now for extension to extend that existing line that we have here about here maybe I'll extend a bit more in a second I can change the shape of the alignment shouldn't be a problem now the same thing I'll choose the extension option shift and right click 
and for extension I'll go from that point there and choose to extend about all the way to here and then again in points and I'll snap to the in point of the existing rod that would be roughly our alignment so from here we can change the shape of the alignment just to make sure it's within what we're looking for so I'm just looking at that's about extension to that line there and going all the way here then returning at 90 degrees to the existing road so I simply this way we created our alignment just looking at the components being created the alignment is showing the stationing or what we call it our changes we can change the labeling for this alignment and choose to show it as a changes rather than stations we can just go to clicking on um, on the labels and edit label group from here we can choose what we've got there the options we have for this label for the major stations we can choose perpendicular with ticks and perpendicular with lines or just parallel with tick so if we stick with the perpendicular with a tick I'll just delete the existing ones for major stations just by pressing on the X and I'll add new ones with uh, perpendicular with ticks but I need to make some changes before I add it so I'll create a child or I can just create a copy for it we'll call it rather than perpendicular we'll call it changes 20 meters referring to 20 meters increments and with tick if we go to the layout for the label First, it's called station, we'll call it chainage. That's just the naming. And for the content of that label, we can click on it and check what's the content there for the station value. So we'll keep it decimal values rather than stationing values or stationing formats. And for the actual reading, we can just choose here to show CH or chainage and that would be the same value for the station there's nothing to change there uh, just looking for the precision every one meter that's fine and i'm happy with that uh, format it's all good so we'll go okay and apply okay we need to add this label to our label set for now so i'll just press add and from there we can add minor station to that one which is just simply showing ticks without any labels the changes will be added at 20 meters increments and the minor stations would be shown as a tick only at 10 meters increments so that's all what we needed for now apply and okay as you can see the format of our stationing being changed to look like changes and that's what we're looking for so that's all what we need to worry about for now on the changes we can start looking at a few other components like just to look at the radiuses one of the very handy ways looking at these details if we just click on the alignment we have to make sure that we're clicking on the actual alignment not on the label so if we click on the green line for the proposed alignment and we go to geometry editor on the right hand side the last icon on the right hand side will give us the alignment grid view if we go through that panorama menu that will show us our alignment in a table view which is very handy i find it very handy for making any amendments to our uh, alignment if i need to change the second radius so by clicking on the radius straight away that will highlight that curve on your alignment so if i need to change the second radius i can just click on that second radius and that should highlight the curve there and we can change that to 140 make it smoother transition there around that area so i'm happy with that i'll close the menu and close that and just press save to make sure all our changes have been saved one last thing we can do before we exit just checking the geometry uh, labels 
So what we've got so far are the changes only shown on the alignment, on the horizontal alignment. What we can show on the horizontal alignment, one of the common labels to be shown, are the geometry points showing the tangency point at the end of each tangent and the start of the curve and the end of the curve and starting of the following tangents. So to show that, simply we can just add that to our label set. So we'll go to edit label group and we can add the geometry points to be shown on our profile just by clicking add. It's asking what kind of geometry points you need to show. We'll show them all and mainly in our case would be just the end and the start and maybe the midpoint of each curve. We'll go OK, apply and OK. As you can see, we started showing on our alignment TP1, tangent point 1 before the curve, midpoint for the center of the curve and TP2, the end of the curve. We have an overlaying issue here. Some of these labels are on top of the changes label so what we can do is just reverse them to the other side to do that we can go back to our label group and this is for the geometry points what we just added we can just edit that and create a new label set we'll call it flipped label and we can go to check how we can to the uh, change of direction. So this is our current situation where the geometry label is shown to the side of the alignment. So this is the start and this is the end of the alignment. So it's always shown on the left hand side of the alignment. If we need to show them on the right hand side of the alignment. If we change, so this is the current text uh, settings. We look at the text that's been anchored to the line. So the anchor component so the actual text here this text is being uh, has been anchored to the line next to it so I just go change the line setting and that should change the text setting with it so if I go to the line settings I'm just looking at the settings now for the line it's at 90 degrees rotation so if we make that 270 degrees as you can see that flipped the line to the other side because we flip the line to the other side and the text is being anchored to the line, that means the text will flip with it. That's exactly what we want. We go OK, apply and OK. And this is a new label set for us, a label style for the flipped settings on the geometry points. We go OK and apply and OK. As you can see, all our geometry points, the start of the alignment, the geometry points for the curves, the start of the curve, the center and the end of the curve being flipped to the other side to give enough space for all the changes to be shown on the other side. So we've done our alignment, now our next step to start working on our profile. We'll do that in our next video.